Good morning, John. I'm not sure if you know about days since Hank Green started a new thing.com. It's a joke among some people on Twitter who have noticed that the amount of time between when I start a new thing and when I start another new thing is often not a long period of time. The counter currently stands at seven days since we launched the Life's Little Lies TikTok. Now this is a funny thing, but it's also something that I'm simultaneously like proud of and terrified of. Like what exactly is wrong with me? And the website actually has a tiny little link at the bottom that shows you all of the things I've done. Terrifying, but an impressively long list. On the other hand, it's riddled with failure. In 2020, for example, there are 11 listed projects. Only four of them are still, like, existing things. Though three of them were jokes, like my OnlyFans for Pelican pictures. Anyway, because I have this habit, people often ask me about, like, how do you get ideas? How do you start things? And I can't tell you how to have an idea, but I can tell you what an idea is, which is a thing that I think a lot of people get wrong. So let's walk through the three main stages of intentional creation. The thought, the idea, and the thing. Thoughts are not ideas. Here's an example of some thoughts. Gosh, we sure do need to raise a lot of money for a maternal center of excellence in Sierra Leone. Creators at DFTBA.com seem to be having a lot of success with socks lately. Wow, I am amazed by the number and quality of independent artists out there. Those are not things that have anything to do with each other, but more importantly, they're not going anywhere. They're not pointing in a direction. I find it useful to have a list of thoughts that might go somewhere. I don't know where they're going, and no, you can't see it. It is a silly place. Ideas are when you combine some thoughts together, and at the end of the combination, you have an objective you would like to accomplish and a, a way to get there, some kind of path. For our example, an idea might be, what if there was a sock subscription where every month you got a sock from a different independent artist and 100% of the profit went to charity? There's a goal there and there's a bunch of thoughts that we think are true that are going to help us get to that goal. We have combined our thoughts together to have an objective and a way to get to it. And then there's the part where you make the idea a thing the implementation, the work. The Awesome Socks Club has now donated over $200,000 to the Maternal Center of Excellence in Sierra Leone. But getting it to this point and continuing to keep it alive is a whole thing. Like, there's a lot of people involved. I just happen to know a person here in Missoula, Montana, who's in the sock business. Like, I don't know if we could have done it without her. And of course, in the act of implementation, your idea changes. Like, we originally thought that our artists were gonna be one of our main marketing vehicles, but then we realized that we didn't want to share all of the socks. We wanted most of them to be surprises, and it it would be weird for artists to be marketing a thing that they couldn't show to people. So we changed our marketing strategy to include a bunch of TikTok people who I had met recently. And now it's its own existing thing, but it's still an idea. But also, and this is often the case in how businesses happen, it started to spin off new ideas. Like, we have this thing now and it's working, so what else can we do with that? Which is why, I've never done this before, I am looking for a product lead and co-founder for a new business that I want to start. There's an application for that job in the description. Let people who you think are cool and interesting and might want to work on something exceptionally weird know about it. John, I'll see you on Tuesday.